could have slipped off the edge yep. and still hit the side of the pool. Yep. Could have jumped too far. Yep. Could have, you know, hit the bottom with such force that I broke a bone. Could have fell through the roof. Could have so many things could have happened. The worst thing that happened was my parents found out and I got grounded. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. All right, Skiz, I figured it out. I figured it out. Okay. The key to a su- successful podcast mm-hmm. is to establish credibility. Okay. Right? Really get the audience to be aware at how professional we are mm-hmm. and how valuable our opinions and information on subjects are. Once you establish that, podcast is solid. So today I figured we'd talk about how we're idiots. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I, actually, I dig that. That's We're in a, uh, a space where we're, we've had several come out now. Yeah. And um, even as I'm like editing... I'm going back through them. I'm like, we, you know, I, we're kind of not high and mighty, but it, we don't have all the answers. We just, we no. want to share some stuff. And the comments are very kind. Talk, I'm, thinking, I'm seeing the word wisdom thrown out there. I'm seeing, you know, and it feels good. But I'm like, these people are so nice, but we're morons. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. It, it's been, it's actually been a little bit stressful because it's like, oh, you guys are so insightful. And oh man, there's so many good stories already about people like we've somehow changed their lives and set them on new paths and things. And I'm like, oh no, oh, I don't know if I can handle this kind of responsibility, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And then I started thinking about it, I'm like, how did we even get here? You know what I mean? Like we, we talked about that. How do we get here? That was our first podcast. And mm-hmm. I think back like, oh, we started this whole thing off with, we don't know what we're doing. And here we are a month later, four, five, podcast episodes yeah. in now yep this will be the fifth and uh we don't we still know what we're doing still we have no clue what we're but, doing. yeah i mean we're doing well we're doing but the bottom line is we have such a huge deep collection uh, of of stories of us being idiots and making yeah. bad decision making and and just quite frankly getting lucky a lot of times so i think that that's what we kind of yeah. want to do is let's just let's tell some stories let's just hang yeah. out and just tell stories let's about, establish that credibility yeah. about how smart we are <laughs> no, that's right <laughs> uh, I, I tell this is one of those situations to where I'm sort of, I'm trying to revisit, you know, my past. And I think about all the different, you know, mistakes I've made. And, and, and the intention of today is to look not, not to remind everybody that we're human. It's not that it's more like, let's just have a laugh in regards to let's laugh at ourselves. It's healthy yeah. to do that. And I look back at all the ridiculous stories uh, of my life and, and I'm really looking forward to this podcast because I guess for lack of a better phrase, the pressure is off. This is just, this is just talking about yeah. just all our blunders, you know, together and separate. Right. And, yeah. and I don't, this know. is a story about how we're lucky to be alive. That's some of those are like, <laughs> that. that's true. So disclaimer. Yeah. Pretty much everything we're going to talk about today. We're at, so all of our podcasts have been like, this is my challenge to you. This is how you should approach this. Yeah. Today's going to be about my challenges. Don't do any of the don't. things we're about <laughs> Don't be like us. Don't ever. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's today. So um, it, oddly enough, as, as you and I discuss, you know, this topic, you're like, oh, I got this story and this story. I got to make a list. I got to write this down. I, so I remember all these stories. And you're like, what about you? And I'm like, I got a few. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Half my stories I was with you during. <laughs> Blame me. I'm not the common denominator, dude. Like it, you have, you're just not remembering or something. I, I have all my stories. You and I have some together. I, I, I got. If I had to travel back in time to the first, the first time ever that I could say that was me being a complete idiot. Now, granted, I was very young at the time. I think if I had to guess, I was probably five. And I'm gonna give myself a pass here because I was probably five. I may have been four, for all I know. Anyways, uh, I had this game where I, I there was a light bulb in my closet and I just wanted to be able to throw my underwear on a light bulb. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you heard that correctly. So, uh, I don't know what it was, but it was a light bulb that stuck out this, like in my closet, it stuck out of the wall, like horizontal. Okay. So I was like, I can, and now when you're four or five, the light bulb looks like it's a, a quarter mile in the air. Right. So I grab my tidy whities and I'm just <laughs> chucking it up there. Now just let me get ahead of something. Yes. I had friends. Uh, I had pl- plenty of friends. It wasn't like I was like this lonely kid. I was just bored one day and I'm like, but it was the whole thing kicked in of, I'm not quitting until I pull this off. Mm-hmm. And I just kept throwing my underwear dude over and over. Just chuck it up there. It's got to get all, oh, I almost lay Oh, so close. And I finally did it. I landed it. I'm like, I did it. And now it's, I can't get it down. Right. So I guess I'll leave. Maybe I should have, you know, turned the light bulb Uh-oh. off. Yeah. 
So I left. <laughs> and I didn't think anything of it. And I left. And uh, again, I am giving myself a pass. All the other stories you're going to hear, I'm not giving myself a pass on. But this one, I'm giving myself a pass on because I was so young. Anyways, I leave. And I don't know, maybe an hour or two hours later, I don't know, I'm in the living room and I'm just, I think I'm sitting with my, with my mom and my brother, who's much older than me, comes <laughs> walking into the living room, holding my underwear. It is black. It is still smoking. <gasps> it, it literally, it, it was to the point where I was like, okay, I almost burned our house down and my brother kept the house from being burned down. Oh my gosh. And he holds it and he wasn't like, he, he was the glee on his face because he was like, okay, first of all, I'm going to show mom this so that she gets, you know, this kid's going to get in trouble. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he just kind of holds it. And I look and I see his, and my mom's like, what is that? I'm all, I threw my underwear in the light bulb. <laughs> Dude, I almost burned the house down at like four oh or five years old. Gosh. That's my earliest memory of uh, just being an idiot. <laughs> oh, I I can't think back that far to, to being an idiot uh, in that respect. But I did have a time where, I don't know how old I was, maybe 12, where my neighbor had this antenna in his backyard. It was like he was like into radios, like CB stuff. Right. So we had this huge antenna that went probably 20 feet up in the air. Mm -hmm. It was one of those like it was like three legs and it had all the cross beams to hold it up. Yeah. And um, me and my me and my buddy, we decided to climb it and see if we can get to the top of this thing. And it's in my neighbor's backyard. And he was he was um, he was a loner. Not not somebody that was super friendly. So we were at risk just being in his backyard and then also decided to climb this 20 foot tower. I only made it about halfway up before I realized that I don't like heights. Yeah. <laughs> but my friend, he made it all the way to the top. And I'm thinking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, had I like fallen off that thing, I probably would have died. Like at least been seriously hurt. What were we thinking? Or if he came out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so this is going to sound like I'm trying to one up you and I'm not trying to one up. you. It's just really so just, I want everybody who's listening to know we didn't brief each other on these stories mm-hmm. at all. Right. So we're just like, let's just talk. Let's just talk about us being idiots. And so we're just kind of coming up with these stories. And it's so funny what you just talked about, because if you fell, you would have gotten hurt. If you came out, you'd been in yeah. trouble. Right. Like what I'm about to tell you, you're going to absolutely think I'm trying to one up you and I'm not. But it's that dude. You, OK, so I want you to think about the electrical towers in the desert the one they're big metal pyramids yeah and they go up 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 and then as they get really high then they actually straighten out and go up even further those things are a ridiculous to yeah. the point to where uh the ladder for them there are these metal pegs that come out of uh one of the corners it comes out of the i want to say either the the northeast pole or the southeast pole but it, it doesn't even start for like 20 25 feet up because they don't want idiots like me climbing it well i was <laughs> gonna climb it now how do you how do you make it to the first, because the, I was a gymnast feet. I was a gymnast oh, and so no. I was able to like Spider Man yeah yeah I was able to what? grab a bar and I was able to to do uh, like a like a kick over to get into an upright position on it grab on it and do the next one I was young and fit right I was definitely not four so I'm not giving myself a pass on this one and I can't say this enough do, do not, try this not do this <laughs> so. I was there with a couple of buddies and they were not into me doing this. I'm like, I just want to climb this. So like, that's, you don't understand this is very dangerous. I'm like, I'm going to climb it. So I just went for it and I hop up and I get to the, to the metal pegs and I start climbing and I just go into the zone. I'm like, just go, just go all the way. And I was in a, I was oh in a gosh. kind of a self destructed mode anyways, but I was like, I'm just going, well, this is not 20 feet, 24 feet. This is like, I think at the top of it's probably got between 120, oh. 150 feet. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, this. they're huge. Yeah, my 10 feet feels like nothing now. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is like a situation to where as I'm climbing, I I did have that voice that was like, can you, can you stop, please? And that self-preservation, you have to stop. If you slip, there's no surviving right. this. So I just kept on climbing and kept climbing because that's what I wanted to do. And uh, I'm going up and up and up. And next thing I know, I can actually hear the from the the, the oh. cables, I'm that close to them, and I'm, I heard later that uh, one of the charges could have jumped, you know, and got me. I I don't know how true that is. I'm not an electrician, but anyways, so I get up there and uh, I look down at my buddies, and they look like ants. They are, so, and they're just looking up at me, and they're just they're not laughing, they're not cheering me on, they're very upset. And they should be, and they're just like, you ha- can you please come down? And all of a sudden, I I never like realized, it, but those those things are moving. And so I'm up there and it's swaying yeah, it's because swaying. you're that high. And in that moment, I can't even, I, to the, I can actually conjure up that feeling in my, in my, my body right now. Oh. I was like, I have to get down now. And it, t- it felt like it took me an hour to get down because every step was so cautious. That's something that it's not necessarily a funny story, but it's an example of like, I feel really 
grateful when people talk about, you know, you know, skills articulates well, all this wisdom. And I'm like, these people need to be reminded that I, I, I can be a real moron. <laughs> yeah. What is it with heights? Like, because you them. and I both had like immediately went to, oh, I used to climb tall things that were put my, you know, at some point I must have got over my, my fear of heights because I also decided it would be fun to jump off my parents' roof into the pool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I don't know if you, you, yeah, you, you remember my parents' old house. Yeah. They had the patio it extended, like where the patio ended, the pool began. Yeah. So there wasn't much gap. So you could literally just go off of the, the patio roof and dive into the pool. It was pretty dangerous still because the pool was only about six feet deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> so to dude. jump from like 10 feet up and then and make sure you don't hit the bottom of the pool, you know, you don't go head first, obviously. But yeah, I used to do stupid stuff like that all the time. And I started thinking like, could have slipped off the edge yep. and still hit the side of the pool. Yep. Could have jumped too far. Yep. Could have, you know, hit the bottom with such force that I broke a bone. Could have fell through the roof. Could have, so many things could have happened. The worst thing that happened was my parents found out and I got grounded. But <laughs> oh, dude, it's a, that you, that's you getting lucky. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, this is gonna, you're going to think there's a theme here. I did the same thing, but it was at a party and it was a two story house. And I was I was young and I was really into the whole like, I don't know, adrenaline rush thing and doing mm -hmm. that whole thing. And it was nighttime. And when I went up with a buddy of mine who was like, you know, he took me up there. He's like, we've been doing this all night or whatever you want to do. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And he's like, okay, you can't see it, but you got to be careful because when you run down the roof, there's a pole sticking up. Huh. And I'm like, where? He's like, well, you can't really see it, but it's like over to the left. I'm like, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was just oh, like yeah. trying to squint my eyes and find it. And I, and I made that leap. And and I, I think about all the things that I've done that can only be categorized as what what a moron. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? What a, what an idiot. But, but you want to know the truth is when I reflect back on those moments, uh, I, it, it's, it's very humbling to me. You know what I mean? To think about, it. I got lucky for getting through with, you know, getting through that stuff. Uh, I, I not going to take chances like that anymore. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be doing <laughs> that anymore. So that's why I guess I try to lean into, you know, I, I really like to produce content with you and I like to do that. And I just focus on that stuff and how, what good can we cause? But sometimes it's healthy to remind yourself where you came from. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it, it kind of goes back. We were talking about that whole like what is growing up a few episodes ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of like that. Right. Like being being a kid still holding on to that energy and and how we can still get to the point to where we consider ourselves mature of adult age even and doing like the dumbest things yeah. ever, especially like I don't know about you, but when I was in that age, like early 20s or whatever, I kind of felt like I was invincible. Like you, you, I had this feeling yep. like I could do whatever I want and I was going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And it what that really didn't change for me until I had my first kid. Oh, yeah. You know, and then it was like, "Oh, I need to really <laughs> at that point in time, I stopped uh making left-hand turns." <laughs> <Because> <laughs> Is that like, where it came like that, from? Like like at that I used to, you know, I used to get, you know, nervous to make left-hand turns all of a sudden because I didn't want to risk my life <laughs> because yeah. I wanted to be there for my son, but before that, I felt like I was invincible and would do all sorts of stupid things. You know, like uh, wrestling with with my buddies to. Oh, you were there. Uh, remember when we went to our old high school in the middle of the night and got on the football field and piled up all the crash mats that yeah. were there and we get we king of the mountain style. And we're like wrestling to the yeah. bone. Like, I don't know how none of us broke a bone that night. Dude, but. we were. Do you remember we were pretending like we're, no pads, no football pads. Let's just sprint at each other and just drill the other person with yeah. our shoulder into their chest, into the crash pad. Not lightly. Everything we got. Yeah. That, that is really stupid. <laughs> we, were, yeah, we were pretty aggressive with God. one another. Uh, our, our buddy that we were, we were with actually was, was he got out of control, right? You remember? He, he like got really he aggressive. Was a, he was a little much. Yeah. And he actually used to play football, too. So yeah. when he would hit us, we're like, okay, you win, you win, you win. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that hurt. I yeah. woke up the next day like, what? were we thinking yeah that and i found out i lost my sunglasses that you've night, so never was... let go of that you, were, <laughs> you you complained about i wouldn't say for weeks but it's years, years later yeah years two decades later i'm yeah. still complaining about how i lost my sunglasses that <laughs> night well dude so you know me like i i like having nice sunglasses it's always been my thing and so i would buy like the expensive hundred dollar plus sunglasses and i would hold on to them for as many years yeah. as i could and so this was a pair and I was, we were still young enough that like, that was, that was a big deal for me. You know, yeah. like I had had those sunglasses for like two years. I was super proud of how you well I maintained those glasses. No, no uh, scratches in the lenses or nothing. 
and then I leave them on that stupid football field yeah. that night, <laughs> and I'm still mad about it. When did you realize you was it the next day? It was the next day. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I, you know, I was gonna go outside, and I'm like, where's my sunglasses? And then I, and then I walked back the entire night through my head, and I'm like. I set them down next to the crash pads. I think I actually went back to the school. I was like, I so wanted to get them back. I think I went back to the school, went on the football field, and they were gone. Uh, so, like, some janitor or something came by the next day. Well, probably cleaned up our mess of crash pads. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Why are these on the 50 yard line? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could have gotten so much. Trouble. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand. Why are we like that? Meaning, like, you, you, you hit on something there when you're young. And I think, and I can, I mean, I think especially for males is that we just, we do feel uh, invincible. Like it's yeah. just strange. And when you're young and, and especially when you're young and fit, you feel like you can just do whatever you want. I used to ride on the top of my friend's cars. Oh my gosh. I can't say it. Don't that do what so we're saying, please. Dangerous. It was so bad. It was so bad. And to the point that like, I would be on the top of the car in my, with my arms, you know, I wrapped over the, you know, into the windows. And I would be like, "Oh, faster, faster!" And and I, it was like the dumbest thing you can do. But we didn't we didn't have cell phones, you know. <laughs> we had to amuse ourselves. But I oh think, like, why did we? <sighs> We're lucky, man. You know, you hear I and I got I and I do have plenty of stories that I'm not gonna not gonna talk about. But we, yeah, <laughs> but you do things like that. Actually, in fact, one of the first times you and I first started hanging out after you know I graduated and like we talked about this before. A couple of years went by and then we started hanging out again in our very first hangout uh you know what i'm you know what i'm going with this it's a good one okay you guys if you remember hold on i have to think if i want to tell this story <laughs> yes you're telling this story. all right fine all right fine fine <laughs> so we you you mentioned in a past podcast you had never seen anybody have that kind of disregard for their car before right and i was i to me i felt that was fine it was it was i drove a you know really mm -hmm. crappy cars it was the only thing i could afford i'd you know, work whatever jobs I could to get the money to buy the crappy car and do my thing. And you and me and my buddy Cameron, that's right. It was you, me and Cameron, dude. And I was driving, Cameron was in the passenger seat and you were in the back seat. And it was like your first like hang with me right. or whatever. I don't know how to call it. Right. But it was, I remember it being like, I've always liked this kid. And now we're, you know, let's, let's, let's we were hang past out. high school we're and past you're my it. section leader anymore. And we're yes. allowed to be friends. We're now. just friends now. Yeah. And now, and I think you're <laughs> awesome. So let's just hang out. And so we're driving around sort of my old, my old stomping ground. And I was like, I say to Cameron, I'm like, Ooh, let's, let's show him where we used to do our jumps on our, on our bikes when we were younger, mm -hmm. not motorbikes, bicycles. Right. Well, back then it was, we read our bikes everywhere. And there was this single lot that had no house on it forever. It was like houses everywhere. And then one lot, no house. But what was on there was a bunch of uh, dirt and hills that kids over the years had molded into its own bike track. It was mm -hmm. actually awesome. It was awesome. And we would make these jumps and, and sometimes they would break down and we would, you know, excavate it more and fix it or whatever. So my point being that through years, the kids of the neighborhood, it was sort of, it was their sandlot, if you will, but right. for bikes. And it was a great, it was a circle, but it was like this, it was like a disformed circle that had jumps and curves and berms. It was just, oh my gosh, we would spend hours there. And it was just so much fun. And obviously I hadn't, you know, seen it in a long time at the, at the time that you're with me, it's nighttime. And uh, as we're driving to it, um, uh, Cameron was like, I think there's a fence around it now. I'm like, no, there's not. No. And now I'm actually upset. I'm, I'm actually, you know, we weren't there yet. <laughs> we pull up and sure enough, there's a chain link fence around this. And I'm very upset because this is a, this is my sandlot, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I wanted the kids in the neighborhood to also be using it. It was this go, go be kids and go have fun. It was a lot that there was no house on. There was nothing, no property, nothing. It was just dirt this whole time. Now with, now with dirt with a fence, that's yeah. all it was. It was like, somebody got together and like, and I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not selling for this. And, Ka and Cameron's like, don't do it. And I start to like rev my engine and you're in the back. You're like, what are you going to do? And it's nighttime. And I'm like, I'm taking this fence down. And you're like, what? And I was, and I go, and I didn't like gun it, but I come up to this fence and I start to push it with my car. And as I'm doing it, it's like messing up my lights yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you had that, uh, was it a Celica? Yeah. Or something? And, and it had those like front lights that pop up. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> zip, zip. and so the light was catching on the fence. Yeah. It was just one of them, just the right just side one. or something. It was catching on the fence as you're driving and I'm and like you said I I had never seen anybody have such disregard for their own property uh, as you did for your car at that moment and a car was a big deal and I'm like oh you you dude you're messing up your car like yeah. what are you doing and and you just like it just be, for whatever reason just became more and more funny to me yeah. as I started to accept the fact that you didn't care like I think that was my first 
uh, exposure to like how much you really sometimes don't care yeah and it's worth like uh, there's always you always say there's always time for a joke or whatever yep. but sometimes there's there's sometimes a joke is also worth destroying your own property yeah and you were, <laughs> and you were in that space and i just was like i my brain couldn't handle it yeah at that moment yeah and i knew i wasn't gonna tear the whole i was gonna blast through this and tear the whole fence down i just wanted to just damage the fence a little bit i was very upset that this was happening and so i <laughs> I did that what you said, and as I'm pushing, I remember thinking like, you know, and Cameron's laughing, and I'm I'm laughing, but I'm like, you know, screw this fence, and but I realize, all right, well, impulse is not laughing. I wonder if this is too much. I feel like I got a good beat on him, and that he would have found this funny, but I don't hear anything coming from the back. Yeah. And I look at my mirror, and the reason I don't hear anything is because you are petrified with laughter. All I could see is your your gaping open mouth at the back going. <laughs> You were dying I, I laughing. I couldn't breathe, dude. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> you, <laughs> you couldn't make a single noise. I was laughing know? so hard, no sound was coming out, and I wasn't able to breathe. Yeah. I was dying. But I'm sure you probably also saw, like, tears yes. running down my face yeah. from the laughter. You're I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Oh, man. And then you did. You did. You pushed the fence in a little bit. You didn't break through it. And, and it was a good joke. You backed out. No harm done. Yeah. Except the next day when you realized that your car was yeah. winking at you. I, uh, that's right. And that that eye would never shut again. Well, what's <laughs> One light is, got stuck in the up position and wouldn't go back down when you shut the car off. See, and that's where I'm confused because I know that happened. I remember that happening. And I've always thought that the reason that light would never come down is because I accidentally hit a light pole. Another stupid story. Uh, in the parking lot of Costco when I was leaving work very late at night. There was like no other cars in the in parking lot. And I was leaving and I was driving diagonal through the parking lot really, really late at night and really, really slowly. But I looked down for a few seconds, which I shouldn't, and the car drifted and I hit one of the light bulbs, but I didn't hit it dead on. I just kind of kissed it, like bounced off mm -hmm. it. I always thought that that was what messed it up. But it turns out I have so many stories of being a moron that they're all, they're all starting <laughs> they to, start to they're together. blending together. Oh, oh, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> It's so embarrassing. That was that was a nice uh, introduction to what it's like to be friends with Skizzle Man. Though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> never a dull moment, right? Yeah. So then, then we decided that you know let's let's keep the fun times rolling. Let's go to college together, and and then just keep goofing off. Yeah. I think those are the the most stories I remember of like being idiots. Were were from those days, those college days when you and I were together and going to class together and working on school projects together. Like we were we were really astute students really just there to learn <laughs> yeah you know front row every class no just stop it elbows we do, yes. in the air yeah we're we... such good students <laughs> yeah we yeah no that's not the case at we all. tried we, we got, so we let's let's paint the let's paint the picture there was three of us right it was you me and my 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 good buddy drew who mm -hmm. became one of your good yeah. buddies at the time and uh, we went into our class and you and I went right to the front because we're like, you know what? We're getting our life straight. We're going to sit at the front. Yeah. Then he's like, what are you guys doing? We're like, we're going to sit up here. He's like, okay, I'll see you in the back in a week. You know what yeah. I mean? He just, uh, yeah. and he's just like, he, you know, make fun of yeah, us. He's, he's like, oh, I'm going to sit in the front, sit yeah. up here and be a good host dude. And it was like, it was like three days of that class. We're like, I, I don't want to be up here anymore. But the teacher kept farting. The us. teacher <laughs> kept farting. I was going to say, do you remember why we moved to the back? It wasn't because we broke down and decided we don't want to be good students. It's because the teacher kept farting. He wouldn't stop. And it was so bad. Yeah, it was constant. I'm like, I wanted to ask him, dude, like, what do you eat? It was so bad. And I'm like, how could you do that? How yeah. could you be in front of your class? It gas them out that way. We paid a lot of money for that. Oh, <laughs> we paid a lot of money to be gassed threw up out. in my mouth. Just now. We still did well though. We did our classes and we joked around. You know what? I gotta. Okay, I'm gonna show the super duper childish side of myself for a second. <laughs> I don't think that you played in this space, but Drew and I used to do this thing. This is so childish. It is so childish. And right now you're like, do we really want this on the podcast? Well, I'm doing it. Uh, I'm worried about this one. This will be. It's. It's, it's the, what you really should be worried about. It's not that one. There's a different one. Okay. So we'd be at school for a long time. And then, uh, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. Should I edit this out? No, here it goes. <laughs> and it'd be time to use the restroom. And it's the long version of the restroom sometimes. And Drew and I, even if we did what we do is we'd go into the bathroom. And if there was somebody in one of the stalls, we'd, we'd go on each side of them. He'd take the stall on their right. I'd take the stall on their left. Okay. This is going to sound so stupid. Okay. So stupid. But trust me, dude, at the moment, it's unbelievably funny. So we would sit there. It'd be super quiet because bathrooms are way quieter than they should be. There should mm -hmm. be music blasting in there. If you don't want to hear stuff, there should be music. And 
I'd be sitting there and then it'd be all quiet. One of us would just go like this, just a little bit, just to see, can we make the other person laugh? And then he, and then he, you'd see, you kind of feel that. And then he'd be like, and I'd be like, it's like and we're not like five years old. We're in our twenties. What is wrong with us? And then we'd get to the point where we'd just be like, <laughs> you, could, you know, the dude in the center was like, what? What's going on? <laughs> this is us getting to higher education. <laughs> well, it, it all makes sense now because I'm sure that that happened like after the day we were in C plus plus class taking a, a test oh, where we had to like write a blackjack game or something like that <laughs> in C C plus no C plus yeah and uh, there was a I remember we were in this like computer lab with these big old windows that were like facing out into the little hallway where, where people, students could walk by and we were taking the test that day and you weren't doing well. Uh, your program wasn't working. It wasn't you, you every time I your, rendered, it wouldn't yeah. work. I'm like, I, I wrote this correctly. What is going on? I was yeah. so upset. And you were getting very upset. And I look over and you'd gotten so upset that you decided I'm going to take my fist, <laughs> clench it really hard and bang it into my head <laughs> over and over again. Like, a, like you're hitting yourself with a frying pan, but it was a big old fist. And I'm looking at you going, oh, dude, I feel really bad for him right now because cause that's got to be frustrating, you know, and don't hurt yourself. And then I look out the window and you know what I see? I see a class of like high school students taking a tour of the school. So this they're trying to bring these students in like, Check out our higher education. Oh. We have this advanced computer lab. Meanwhile, there's this dude in there banging himself <laughs> in the head with his fist because he can't, he can't he, because he forgot a semicolon. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, I think you even said it too. You're like, Skiz, stop, stop. And, and because one of the walls was just a window. Yeah. Was, that's what they were looking through. And all yeah. they see is what, like, it, you, you set that up perfectly. Like, you could get a higher education. Look at our state of the art labs. And and they peek around and I'm like, ah, I'm just going nuts. <laughs> oh, those kids. Uh, I wonder if any one of them enrolled in that. I feel, Probably I actually, not. I think I made eye contact with one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this look on, I think that one needs help. Yeah, dude. Oh, that was the worst. I remember that too. I, and, and we still went on and we did our thing and, uh, uh, here, here's a fantastic story of us being an idiot. I, we can tell the story together because it's both of us. Mm -hmm. So you, me, and Drew were in a, in a team and we had a, a program in, uh, or a project in, um, gosh, what class was that? Do you remember? What I, Cause I know, you know, what story I'm about to tell, but what is the, um, <clears throat> that was the class we were supposed to write that software for like the. We ended up writing the software for your uncle. I think. Oh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it was. We had to, I don't remember, but anyways, it doesn't matter. All I know is that you and I decided it was going to be another one of those days where it's like, I'm not going to class. I'm just not going to, I'm, we're going to, let's go to McDonald's. We get and, hungry and play foosball. We get hungry. <laughs> like, well, because you know, we didn't have time for breakfast ever, right? Yeah. Because it, we had to be there super early and I'd come to get you. And we told the story about how sometimes you weren't even awake and I had to break into your house and pull you out of bed. Saw and the fan art, by the way. <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. And so we'd get to school and neither one of us had, eaten anything and so a class goes by maybe two classes go by and we look at each other like i'm hungry man yeah let's go let's just go let's go get some breakfast sandwiches from mcdonald's or whatever and we would we would skip every once yeah. in a while and go eat yeah so we chose to skip this class mm -hmm. and uh what had happened was it wasn't like drew stayed back that was we didn't all have the same classes but we had that class together uh <clears throat> so you and i left and when we came back because there's what it, what, what had transpired was the other uh, students who were in our, we were friends with all of them and they were like, yeah, so it's not a Saturday or anything, making fun of office space. <laughs> yeah. Like you're supposed to present today and we're like, whatever. And they're like, we're not messing with you, man. You guys were supposed to present today, <laughs> present. Oops. And we're like, what are you talking about? And we meet up with Drew. He's like, yeah, that was pretty embarrassing. And I'm like, what, what happened? So Drew walks in, we're not there. He walks into the class and the teacher's like, you, you ready? He's like, for what? He's like, for your presentation. And Drew starts to dance. He's like, is this enough? What am I doing? You know? <laughs> and he's like, where's your other two? He's like, I have no idea. And so it was like our, it was key to our grade, key to our graduation. Oh, yeah. And we just know how did none of us know we were supposed to present. <laughs> so we went and, um, we rescheduled with the teacher. We sweet talked him and, yeah. and and I was like, we're not going to mess this up. He's like, all right. And he's like, you're not going to get another chance at this. And I was like, I understand we should have been there. 
So we rescheduled for like a week later, or whatever. And then, and then Drew overslept. So it's just the two of us. <laughs> and so we're waiting and I'm just waiting for Drew and waiting for Drew. And I'm trying to, you know, hit him up and I'm waiting. And uh, he's not showing up. And the teacher's like, well, that's it. You got to go now. And there was nobody even in the class. It was just like, he did set aside time just for right. us. And he's up there and we stand up and I was like, so do you want to, oh, I know what it was. We had done a, a job, not a job fair, a, a business fair. Mm -hmm. And we had dinner, done our thing. And then I, I, he wanted us to do it for him or whatever, but that's what I thought. That's what you thought. That's what Drew thought. Just do what you did. And I said, so what do you, do you want to just run you through what we did for the business fair? And he goes, well, do you have your deliverables? And I'm all, do we have our what? <laughs> and he's all your deliverables. And in that moment, I was like, okay, I got one more out. I'm going to look over at impulse and he's going to give me some sort of signal on what deliverables he's talking about. <laughs> and I look over at you, dude, look over at my savior. And what do I see? You're all, I don't know. <laughs> hands in the air and when you did this dude this was the worst feeling when our professor oh. went oh. He, buried, <laughs> he buried his face in his hands and just drug him down across his face like oh i'm so tired of being a professor <laughs> and we did that to him we oh. did that we did it to him us i i don't know how we ended up passing that class after that we got it done, man. We somehow got it done. We did a good job. I mean, oh. the bottom line is our actual presentation at the business fair went uh, very well. Yeah. And then so that I actually I so I can I remember this. I thought it was either or do the business fair or do the presentation in class. Mm -hmm. I was just it was both. <laughs> it was both. <laughs> what do you know? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That was a fun time. Yeah. We, we were we really were pretty rambunctious. Uh, there is a story I'm not sure we should tell in the podcast. But do you remember? When it wasn't just us that decided to skip class, oh, you my rallied All right. half the class to skip. Okay, so you remember the story about <laughs> me in gymnastics and how I my my instructor, you know, I got the worst punishment. He's like, "Cause you're the ringleader." This is also I told the story about the head of the organization at, at where I work now, being like, "You you know, people do what you do, or whatever." So this was this was my Everest. We had uh, we were we had just finished a class. And as it was wrapping up, we had learned that the very next class was canceled for whatever reason. And I don't know. And these classes aren't very long. They're like 55 minutes or something right. like that. And so it was, uh, it had been canceled. It, the reason is irrelevant. I don't know. And then we, we had a class after that. So what we knew is we got 55 minutes and I was like, dude, okay. So for, oh, you really, am I really telling this? Okay. So <laughs> I want to say this. Uh, first of all, I want to point out when, from a drinking standpoint, we were of age. Yeah. It's just be very clear we were of age and i really liked a lot of the our friends that were in there and i and i think i turned to you i was like dude we should we should try to get a couple of drinks in us before the next class and you're like what are you talking about he's like Mind you, it's like 9 a.m yeah 9 a.m <laughs> it's less than an hour away i'm like yeah but this is one of those things you just gotta make it happen and so i i pull over a couple dudes and i and i, I talk to chase chase, chase, chase I'm like, was awesome yeah and i say to chase i'm like chase there are times in life when it comes to making a memory that you know you're gonna cherish <clears throat> you gotta pull the trigger and do it he's like what is it like he was like yeah. whatever it was i was like yeah you pulled we got in. 55 minutes we do this right we can get a couple drinks in us before the next game in, 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 before the next uh class he's all Okay, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, like, he, he, like, he immediately like, yeah. calls over somebody else yeah. to spread the word. Yeah, oh, so man. we we're like, we need two. We need we have two cars. We need two, you know, designated drivers. You guys are opting out. You're not going to have a drink, but we just gotta. We and we we literally put together this mission plan. Like you are going to go get these drinks. We're going to meet at this apartment. We've got 12 minutes there, and we got to come back to class or whatever. And dude, ready, break. And we all just we went. We met up. We did our thing, and everybody slammed a couple beers. And then we in and it hits you hard and fast when you have a couple beers that fast. And then we come back to class and we are laughing and giggling, yeah. dude. And this is, this is, the, this is the moment. <laughs> this is the coup de gras. We come back to that next class, dude. And we're just, just, we can't even get over we're ourselves. We're so happy we that it. we pulled it off. We did it. We go, we walk in and who's right there staring at us? The Dean. The Dean is right there staring at all of us. And I remember in that moment, dude, I was all, there's nothing funny about this. I just ruined all these kids' careers. Like I, I was so, I, I was all getting kicked out yep, of college right there. I was just like, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did this. Like, that's all I could think. And the dean was there, and he was there to issue an award to us. <laughs> yeah, to us, like yeah. specifically, right? Yeah, like, to you, me, and 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 Drew, because for <laughs> for I think for the um the the business fair, I think I could be Maybe. wrong there, but it, with bottom line is the dean was there to give us an award for something we had done. <laughs> And we come in just like, and you know what's funny is he wasn't an idiot. He was like, "You got to be kidding me!" You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. he was like, "Yeah, well, I mean, obviously it was it was obvious, I guess, because there was other students that didn't go, mm -hmm. you know." And we walk in the room, and one of them made a comment like, 
y'all smell loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're the words. And we're yeah. like, oh, really? Yeah. Like, I didn't realize, like, oh, you could smell like? Yeah. It, like, you have, like, a smell. It's like, yeah. Like, and so then we're up there with the deed, and I'm, like, holding my breath, like, to get the award. I, like, don't let them smell the alcohol in my yeah. breath, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Are my you kidding gosh. me right now? I cannot believe that. Oh. I thought we were in so much trouble. And I, and I, and the guilt I felt was just overwhelming. But once we, it was, we got away with it, and the irony of actually getting an award at that very time, yeah. it was, like, it was just, like, the perfect moment, dude. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Why did we do that? I don't know. Um, well, like you said, for the stories, but again, we want you to yeah. preface everything with, please do not be like us because yeah. I mean, it is a miracle that we've made it to the point that we have, because like that kind of shenanigans didn't even stop after college. No, like we were doing stuff like that in our like actual career jobs. Well, not, we, not like, drinking. Let's not, be very not clear. drinking. Yeah, no, yeah. no, we weren't drinking on the job, but like having like pulling shenanigans, like, um, what you guys, you rigged some sort of like, uh, air horn oh, it's the best. to my chair. You remember no. that? Oh yeah. No, no, no. I did it in your drawer. You, you did, it, a, oh, air, you did oh, a, oh, we did the air horn, the, the loud. Eh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you rigged it to my chair. So every time I sat down and be like, eh, <laughs> eh, and just a little bit would come out and, and we're in it like again, again, we're in this big cubicle, you know, sea of cubes. Yeah. And every time I sit down, there's this loud, eh. like, what is happening? And I looked out and you guys like rigged up a, but no, I know the one you're thinking of. You did the, like the, the compressed, bottle of compressed, uh, compressed air. air. Yeah. yeah. And you like filled my drawer with those like packing peanuts. No, it was with, um, it was with uh shredded paper. Shredded I went, paper. I went to, um, so I went to an office max to get both the compressed air and I went to their shredder department. I was like, I want to take, can I take the garbage out of here? <laughs> so I, I actually, he's like, what, what's happening? I said, I want your, I want the garbage. I want the shredded paper. <clears throat> and somehow I had to buy him a Dr. Pepper to take his garbage out. But anyways, I got, I got a big old bag of the shredded paper and that's what it was. It wasn't packing peanuts. So go ahead. It was just, it was the shredded paper. Cause that's going to be worse. <laughs> yeah. Funny. And then somehow you guys rigged it up so that when I opened the drawer, Brilliant. it, it triggered the compressed air to shoot into the paper and it just flew up into my yeah my it was face. best it was it was such a great design too because it was so non-assuming and like you said it was not easy you gotta i mean you have to appreciate that ingenuity right we had all these pulleys on there so when you pulled it it would pull down on the trigger of the compressed yeah. air and i buried the compressed air underneath all that you know what i think about it i would i wish i did is i wish i put a solid piece of paper on top of the compressed air so that the whole paper would come up and push all that uh -huh. instead of just kind of carved like a, a sharp yeah. hole or whatever but uh, it was, I remember that you always got to work a lot earlier than I did. And I'm like, I'm setting my alarm. I'm not missing this. And, uh, I pull into the parking lot <clears throat> and, and what I think is early enough, but then I see your car. I'm like, no. And I go running inside. I run upstairs and I'm running like down the hall when I was downstairs, I'm running down the, the cubicle hallway. And, and it, this is when the cube walls were still high. And, uh, as I'm running, I, I like here, I like, you know, <laughs> and I get, and I come in, dude. I like, and, and just as I come in, I can see the confetti still like sprinkling down and you're holding the drawer shut. You're like, do you miss it by like two seconds? So I'm like, no. <laughs> That's what we did yeah, though. That was fun. That was fun times. <laughs> we, we, we just, yeah, I think we sometimes McBean. Yeah. I'm calling you out McBean. Yeah. <clears throat> we know you're watching. <laughs> yeah. He, he was good at this stuff too. And he sent me a, like a glitter bomb one time at work that ended up pretty much breaking my keyboard because <laughs> so much <laughs> glitter got inside. Dude, do you remember the jug of death? Oh, oh my this isn't exactly like a, a us being idiot. Well, yeah, no, it's us being idiots still. Um, somebody left. So they had like a water jug and it was like kind of clear and they had filled it with soda or something. And, and they left the soda in there for like months. Yeah. And like, it wasn't full. Uh, it's just a little bit like, you know, a quarter full. And they left the soda in there, and we noticed, like, it was just sitting there. Nobody knew whose it was. And the next thing you know, there's, like, mold yeah. growing inside. So gnarly. And it started to get gross. And so we decided that we would take that jug and just slowly add New things, things yeah. to it. Right? <laughs> and so we, like, throw in a little, like, piece of chocolate, you know, and, like, whatever. A banana. A little oh. a, a fragment of a banana. Yeah. What was the, I remember the grossest thing in there? Well, what I think was the grossest thing was, okay, so this is a different story, but one day I was going to take out my trash. Yep, yep. Was, okay, you know what it is. I was, I was going to take out my trash, and I was, like, grabbing the trash bag out from the trash, and as it, because of, like, the suction, it was, like, you know, the suction of the trash bag in the trash. We pause. 
I just want to stop for a second because what I'm really enjoying is that everybody listening thinks that it's going to be something in the trash. Right. And they don't know what's coming. <laughs> Carry Here on. Here we go. So I'm, pick, I'm pulling the trash bag out. It lifts the entire trash can up. And <clears> finally, the bag gave way. Right. So now the entire trash can falls to the floor and I am holding the bag in my hand. Well, I don't like wearing shoes, as you know. And so I was that's been a long time. And uh, I was barefoot. And the trash can came down with all of its weight Ugh. squarely on my big toe on the right side of my, on my right foot. And, uh, and it was pretty gnarly. I had like the whole blood blister thing underneath the nail and the nail didn't look so good. Well, a couple weeks go by and the nail decided I'm just going to completely fall. Oh, my, my entire toenail, my big toe fell off in its full entirety. So the full thing. And I decided... This is perfect for the jug of death. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. See, that's commitment right there, man. And so I brought my toenail into work and uh, put it into the jug of death. <laughs> oh my goodness! And the way I so here's the deal is that when we would do this, the jug of death, <clears throat> uh, it was we everybody was always afraid to open it, right? Yeah. Because what was inside? I mean, it got to a point where it was like full of just like gelatinous. Oh. I don't even know why we did this. It, but toxic. We couldn't get rid of it though. It was like the, it became one of us, and so. Uh, we would do this thing where we, we would do a dry run. Like I, let, let's say I had the toenail or the banana or whatever. And it'd be like, okay, I'm going to step back. You know what I mean? I'm going to step back. You open, I'm going to move forward. You know, you yell clear when it's clear. I'm going to go in. Once I do it, I'm going to say submitted. And I'm going to back up and you close and everybody back. You know, we treat it like it was a plutonium bomb. Right. And that's how we always did that stuff because <clears throat> we wanted to make sure not only did we do it quickly, but can you imagine if we spilled that thing? Oh, can you even imagine? Oh, no, no. <laughs> we used to, but like, as far as the prank goes, remember, we used it to prank. Like we would yep. hide it in each other's cubes and see how long it would take for the, for them to notice, sneak it into our, our each other's backpacks. Yes. So I walked up, around with it for like two weeks without knowing. <laughs> it's in your backpack yeah. for two weeks. You, you get home, you open your backpack to pull out your laptop or whatever. Jug of death is in there. Yeah. Oh, the best one ever was, um, I was working and McBean comes up on the other side of my cube wall. So, and he like to where it's me and then my monitor and then behind the monitors, the wall and behind that wall is McBean and he's looking at me and he's like, takes my picture. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, just taking your picture. Well, he was doing it because days earlier he had taped the jug to the back of my monitor. So <laughs> he had a picture of me just like with my goofy smile looking up at him and the jug is right there in front of me. And I have no idea. Taping stuff to the back of the monitor actually was a, was a good plan to remember. Was it McBean or was it somebody else that like really did, couldn't stand the smell of fish? Oh, I don't know. I think it was McBean. I could be mistaken, but. So we, we opened up a couple packets of tuna, like the ones that come in the bags, <laughs> and we taped it to the back of his monitor so that, you know, days would go by and the tuna would just reek, uh, you yeah. know, because we just knew. I, I think I could have sworn it was him. I could be wrong. He's going to have to tell us if it was him. But and I, I don't remember how long those bags of tuna lasted, but can you imagine everybody else in the work? Oh, yeah, I know. It's so rude. Do you remember, So we talked a little bit about Orbeez. See, now we're just on work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm fine with it. That's why I was. I just wanted to hang out. So we're talking about work pranks and we had um, uh, the Orbeez, which we briefly discussed earlier, but they were basically little teeny tiny pellets that were like half the size of a BB. But once it, they were put in water, they would expand over time into like a about a marble size yeah. and it would be this gelatinous little wet thing. And McBean discovered Orbeez before you know any of us did. Mm -hmm. And so he we would have a couple here, a couple there. We're like, what are these things? And when we had finally learned, well, it's game on now. And I'd say the best, <clears throat> the best prank I did to McBean from an Orby standpoint was I got a cup ready, a paper, like a, like we had disposable cups, you know, at work and I got this cup ready. And what I did was I put like a, a hard surface underneath. I cut the bottom out, put a hard thing underneath it and I filled it with Orbeez and I held it and I just had it at the ready and all the Orbeez were plump and ready to go. And he, I waited till he had his own cup to drink out of. And then once he got called out of his cube for just a second, I ran in with this replacement cup. I took his away. I put this right back where it was. So he comes back. It, it, it took seconds. He comes back and he, he why it, this cup looks the same. And I'm just, I'm just looking over the wall, just waiting and waiting and waiting. And he's working. He finally goes to take that sip. And as he lifts it, dude, there was probably 400 Orbeez in there. As he lifts it, he, you know, he goes to take a sip and just, just everywhere. And, <laughs> He wasn't even the slightest bit mad. He just started laughing. He's like, that, he goes, you got me. He's like, that was really, really good. God, I love the work pranks. Oh, they were good. And they got to the point to where it's like, I think we were trying to figure out how to set up like hidden cameras in our cube yep. to catch each other at yeah. some point. 
It's yeah. Like, Who's doing this? Yeah. And I, Cause like I did, he was, he, he, I'm not even going to go into that story, but he did a great prank on me where he got found an archive of old photos of mine. And uh, I guess I am going in the story. And, then he, <laughs> and he, he found old photos of mine somehow, which I, I think I remember how, but it doesn't matter. And I would come back to my cube <clears throat> and there'd be an old photo of me up on my cube. And I'm like, who, who has the, what is going on? And so I set up a pinhole camera to capture them. Uh, we talked about it. And then yeah. I, then I threw a meeting to talk to the whole team about it. And I, what had happened was I had put together a video <laughs> uh, of him being caught. And, and, but before I showed the video, I had this whole thing break down where everybody's name was up on the wall and names just started to fade away until only his was left. And he's like, Oh, I've had, and then the video played of him getting caught. <laughs> People have got to be thinking, when did you work? Yeah. We did. We worked. Yeah, no, we did great things. <laughs> yeah. And you, you know, you're still there doing great things. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we, again, I go back to what we talked about with the whole growing up thing. And we found ways to, to have fun and we didn't get into those stories during that, that podcast. So this yeah. gave us a chance to get into it, but yeah, college. And then we just kept going and we've settled down. Somewhat, yeah. Maybe I know. not. I did get hit in the head with a pizza at Winco. That was years ago. You bled a little bit. <laughs> it was that was years ago. I did a whole story time with that one. That was that, that was us messing around. And, and but I don't have the same. It makes me a little bit sad. But I haven't pulled. I mean, I haven't been in the office or whatever. But I haven't pulled an office prank in a long time. And to the point to where even in the last couple of years of being there, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've liked everybody. I work with, but there was something very special about that particular yeah. camp, right? It was, it was like a brotherhood, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and, and it was, uh, we knew, we knew we could do that kind of stuff. We could it still be cool. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and it was to the point where I was like, I could probably do that with the people I'm here now, but I'm just not going to, you know what I mean? I'm, I don't know. And it makes me sad because mm -hmm. I, I still feel like there's a part of me that wants to do it. But, uh, I mean, Hey man, McBean's your neighbor, dude. There's no saying that we can't go get this done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, That's true. <laughs> he's so. We, but let's not be over the top, right? So, so he's building a guest house. Mm -hmm. Copied me. Let's let's burn it down. Burn it down. <laughs> burn it down. You gotta do something with it. That that jerk. <clears throat> I built this guest house, and he decided he had to build his just like four feet bigger, <laughs> just just to say his is bigger. <laughs> well, that's because when he talked about doing it, I said, I did say, I'm like, dude, you got to make sure it's at least one. Foot that's bigger. your fault, man. <laughs> he's over there building. Oh, well, let's is, burn it. We'll burn it down. <laughs> no, I, but I do want to say it's, it is fun to reminisce about these stories and it should also be exciting to think about the stories that we're going to continue to make. Yeah. But I can't say it enough. You just don't, I mean, the office pranks do it, but all the other crazy stuff. <laughs> as long as you're not going to get fired. I was, well, not, well, yeah, of course. But I mean, I'm talking about the safety stuff, right? Like, I mean, like they were fun stories to tell, but they're only fun to tell because I didn't fall off that tower. Yeah. I didn't fall off the car. You know what yeah. I mean? That's the only reason they're fun to tell because it didn't go south. But it was, the, the, I am like unequivocally saying this, this is not a cover our butt thing. This is, I'm being very real here. Those were really, really stupid ideas. Those were examples of skiz being genuinely really, really stupid and making really bad decisions. And, and yeah. I do, I do legitimately have more of those stories than you do. I was, I was a lot more self-destructive than you were back then a lot more. And so I do have more of those stories and I feel very grateful for having come out and I didn't even share them all. You know what I mean? I even share them all, but it's, it's, I, your mom's probably glad. Oh my God. Share them all. Oh my God. She listens to this too. Mom, I, none of that was true. <laughs> it was true. Was, those were all lies. I all I did was our, sit in a padded room and do homework. Our parents are listening to these podcasts, yeah. which is amazing. I, I love, that's one cool thing about these podcasts is that I feel like it's kind of expanded our audience a little bit because not everybody's into Minecraft. And obviously our channel was formed with Minecraft mm -hmm. content as, as its base. And, and this is very different. And I know, I know, you know, I'm probably not talking to the people that are listening. I'm talking to the people that aren't listening, which doesn't help. But, you know, there's going to be a, a bunch of people that did subscribe to the Infant Skiz channel on YouTube for our, just our Minecraft content, which we now use to do the same shenanigans, but in game in a yes. much safer arena. Uh, lots because safer. Because it's virtual. Yeah, I'm knocking you into the <laughs> void. <I'll> yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah. So we still have our little shenanigans, but now in a virtual environment, which is nice. But I do like the fact that, that this podcast has opened doors to to more people to get a chance to know us. Yeah. Um, and the fact that our, our families now apparently are even watching and listening and stuff is pretty cool. I want to touch on one thing because I, I I know we're probably wrapping up a little bit, but I want to touch on one thing that you you talked about and that when you had when you had your first child, it, it kind of shaped you a little bit and had you wise up. Um, that I mean that's that's an understatement, right? And and the reason I'm pointing this out is because 
that self-destructive mode I was in, obviously I don't recommend that or whatever, but this was, I, I did feel invincible. I mean, climbing that tower is a completely, completely ludicrous thing to do. A mm -hmm. compl it, it is, is, I mean, just no, all laughing aside, it is entirely idiotic to do that. Riding on top of a car is entirely idiotic to do. Jumping off a two-story house into a pool. These are idiotic things that the only reason I got away with is because I got lucky. That's it. That's it. And I do remember when I had my first child, it was the same thing to where I was like, I can't, I, I, this is, whoa, I got, woo, I got to take care of myself. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I'm saying it because I still think that, you know, I think kids have the propensity to be, you know, especially young males to be destructive today and, and all that. And I'm being very emphatic when I'm saying don't do these things because you're not going to get so lucky. I, I, yeah. I, without going into it, I, I can tell you, I, I know people who did not get so lucky. So yeah. do you. And, and, yeah. and all we did was just have dumb luck. Yeah. This is just dumb luck to get through that stuff. So don't do any of the things we're talking about, but since we got away with them, we just want to tell a story a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was. yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a really good point. It's uh, part of this, part of this podcast journey that we're on is to try to help people in any way we can, right. By sharing advice and our insights on stuff. And like the last podcast we did was about conversing. And I feel like if, if people take to heart, some of the things we said and that they're, they're going to have much better relationships throughout their life. If they, if they practice that kind of stuff and we really want to help people in this particular podcast that you just listened to um this is a learn from our mistakes don't do them yourself hopefully we're helping you avoid yeah. being an idiot which could get you in in some kind of trouble or, or worse so yeah so that's that's this one i guess yeah, my i talk about all the time i love poker and one of my favorite poker he's the best poker blogger vlogger in the world and i in my opinion and they also is one of the, he's an incredible poker player. His name's Brad Owen and he has his YouTube channel and he is amazing. His banter is amazing. His editing is amazing. Uh, but something he does <clears throat> is over the years as he continues to get good, better and better and better, he makes sure he, he'll show you every hand where he was really bad and, and did and made, had horrible decision-making. So he doesn't edit his stuff to make it look like all he is is flawless. He shows you yeah. these, these are all, and this is, Something that, I mean, not, not to get too deep, but this is something that we've kind of touched on that he, the, the world needs to embrace imperfection. It's okay. And that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of what this podcast was about is like, oh, we're, you know, we're giving all this advice and doing this, you know, what we think you should be doing, but at the core of who we are, we're just still very, very fallible humans. Mm -hmm. Here's some proof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we're just giving our, our thoughts, which is, you know. A lot of the stuff we're, we're not like psychologists or, no. or or anything. We're just two dudes. There's, we're <laughs> two, just a couple two lifelong dudes. friends that like talking about random stuff. Yeah, that's. I think that's like our whole description of our podcast. It's. I think that's. Yeah, <laughs> it, well, it sums it up. But all right, so don't do any of the things that we talked about. I can't say it enough. Don't don't do all mm -hmm. those craziness and uh, and and also just enjoy this pod. This one particular for what it was is yeah. just like just dude, just hit record and let's just let's just talk. Hopefully, about stories. hopefully you guys laughed as we did reminiscing yeah. some of these stories. So yeah, but yeah, stay safe out there yeah <laughs> good finish